Hello and welcome everybody. Marcus Small here from the smallman.com. Today we're going to talk about how you consolidate files with Power Query. Now traditionally this task would have been done with Visual Basic for applications, but Power Query has come to the fore and actually manages to do it without too much of a hassle or any programming knowledge. Now this is the sort of thing that we're going to do. I've got a link to the files so you can use exactly the same files just below this video and what we're going to try and do is have a consolidation file and then import files with multiple tabs into this single consolidation sheet and then refresh the files so a file 4 will come in and we'll show you how seamless that process actually is. Now let's just take a look at where the folders are located. I've got a file or folder on my desktop called consolidation and in the consolidation are these three spreadsheets, consolidation one, two and three. And in the consolidation spreadsheets, I've got two tabs in the first one. This is console one and it's asset backed securities and bonds. And then I have a, well this one's a three, so it's the Forex tab. And then going back to the middle, I've got equities and commodities. Now, one thing to note is all three files have spreadsheets inside them that are identically formatted. So all the headings are in exactly the same place. It's the classic and typical template model. And we're going to go about pulling all the data from these three files into a single spreadsheet, stacking it on top of one another. Then we'll add a fourth file, let's call it console four, and we'll show you how easy it is to up that, update that particular file. All right, so let's open a fresh spreadsheet. So let me just close these files and I'll get a brand new, clean, fresh spreadsheet. So here it is, so it's just a brand new spreadsheet. And what we're gonna do first is we're gonna to go to the data tab. And we're going to get data from a file, from a folder. Get data from file, from folder. And it opens up this particular dialog box. And I'm going to browse to where my data is. Now yours can be anywhere on your computer. I put mine on my desktop, you can see this little consolidation sheet, that's got the three files contained within it. So we click OK and it'll tell us what's contained within. And this pops up. So what we want to do is we want to get the, well, firstly, we want to transform the data. So we could combine it, but there's a lot of information that we might want to cleanse out of this data set. So we'll transform the data. And in here, what I'd like to do is, now this is where you, if you've got extensions, like if you've got um, PowerPoint files or, uh, or any other style of file, text files, access files, etc., you can filter those out and just have .xls files. Um, inside there, but at this stage all I want to do is grab the content and the name and I'll right click, make sure you right click on the header and, it, and you'll choose, choose to remove the other column. So it takes out all the other stuff. And then from there I've just got a content and a name. So this is the name of the file. And what I want to do from here is I want to add a column and I want to add a custom column. So we choose add column, custom column. And this will give us this uh, customization of the custom column, and I'll just call this console. And then from here, what I want to do is I want to add an Excel workbook, and then I want to open brackets, and I want the content. And then I want to close my bracket, yeah? And then I'll click OK. And then what I get is this console uh, column here, and this has access to all of the field names inside of our table. So we click on these little arrows here, and that opens everything up, 
and I'll use the original, I'll use what's, what's here, the item, the kind, hidden, etc. and I'll click OK. And now from here what I can do is I can, I'll take my name, name1 and my data and they're the ones I want to keep. I'll get rid of everything else. So once again I'll right click and I'll say remove other columns. That just gives me my three. You'll see this, you may or may not have this. If you're using my file, you will. This is a reference to a table which may or may not be there. I don't want this data coming through, so I'll take these guys out. Now, it's a repetitive process, so it will do that all of the time. So every time you upload the information, it'll go through these steps which appear over here and pull and push the data in the way that you've done it. So it's a consistent process. Now we'll just use these little arrows again. So we'll outline what's actually in there. Column 1, 2, etc, etc. That's alright. We can fix that up once the data comes in. So we'll click OK and then it will give us a look at what the whole data set looks like, which is fantastic. Now you'll notice that my column headings are not quite right but we can get rid of that. So we can basically go on the home menu, use first row as column headers. So use first row as headers and that fixes that. However, the headers from the other sheets, so that's basically console one, console two, console three. So console two and three have come in as well. So what we'll wanna do is I'll use the year and then you see that year here has also come in and then we'll just have the 1920 tag that's cool. All right, so basically that's all. Oh, no, I might get rid of this. I don't need the name of the file in there. So I can highlight the console one because it's got console one, console two, and console three. Look, one, two, three, and I can remove that column. All right, now that's effectively the five particular tabs stacked upon top of one another. There's ABS, bonds, commodities, equities, and foreign exchange. So that's all the information I want. So now all I have to do to pull it back into Excel is to close and load the data set. So we'll choose to close and load, and it will put it onto a fresh sheet. And we can see that all the data has come in. If I just control shift L, we can see that we've got all of the information and everything stacked neatly. Now, I, you, we could put uh, a pivot table on the back of this, and then as we refresh the pivot table, the new data comes in in this table format. It refreshes, it then flows through into our pivot table, and we get a nice summary. Let's say we had uh, volume and sales, or sales and sales commission by uh, whatever metric we choose to pull out, maybe by this area here. Why don't we just go ahead and do it? So basically sales commission, let me just fix the formatting up. And we'll put a pivot table into a new worksheet and we'll just choose the description over here. And we will choose the sales and commission. And I'll just fix those formatting points up. So now we've got uh, we now we've got a nice summary by all of the tabs by our total sales and our total commission. And now this is the process that we go through. Once we'd gone through all that sort of pain and heartache wasn't very painful. We didn't need much technical knowledge. The process of going through and updating that information, so this little summary table updates as well is really quite straightforward. Now I've gone through and I've put a console four. And in this console four tab, this is basically our new asset class and we've called it crypto. And you'll see we've got uh, a BTC, we've got Chainlink and we've got Ethereum. So basically we're gonna pull that data in as well. So what we're going to do is we're just going to come in here and we're going to go to the data menu and this is what you might want to keep a secret because this is the process of updating the information with new files that come in it's just basically refresh and you'll notice we've only got one two three four five so we'll go refresh refresh all it goes in pulls the new data and we've got 
one, two, three, there's our crypto, four, five, six. And you can have a look at just the new information that's come in, we'll click OK, it's just the crypto based data. That's all very good. And let's go to our summary tab, let's refresh that data. And there's the crypto that's popped in nicely, yeah? Now I've used the other file above as a bit of baseline, but that was just to save some time. All right. So there we go. That's how easy it is to create a Power Query process that pulls data from multiple files with multiple sheets into a single place. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Otherwise, have a great day, everybody.